stampers and welcome to Laura's stamp pad. Today I'm super excited to share with you this beautiful bushel basket of apples that I actually created with the basket bunch stamp set and the coordinating basket builder framelits. So I actually got this idea, it was not an original by me, I got this idea from the amazing Shelly Gardner from Stampin' Up, who I just absolutely adore, but she showed us different ways to use this Basket Bunch stamp set that looks very Eastery. let's be honest, there's the little bunny and the eggs and the flowers and the basket, so it looks like a super Easter uh, stamp set, and if you don't celebrate Easter, or perhaps you don't send a lot of Easter cards, you may look past this stamp set. But I have been playing with it. Um, Easter is actually my favorite holiday, but I don't actually send a lot of cards for it. But I just thought this was adorable. So after Shelly showed us so many great ideas of other things that you could do with this stamp set, I fell in love. Like the little bunny for a baby card. And of course you know I love flowers, so I was sold on the flowers already. And I love the little peep because I know I love peeps. I know there's people out there that don't, but uh, let me know in the comments below if you're a peep lover like me um, and what your favorite one is. Is it the pink bunnies? Is it the yellow chicks? Uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Or if you don't like peeps, you can let me know that too. But then there's also the amazing eggs, the carrot that you could always use for lots of occasions. And then of course there is the Easter egg here that's just the, um, the solid circle and then also the little leaf that we're going to use today as well as just the bottom portion of the basket. So in the framelits, there's oodles and oodles of dies in there, and I used these two dies. So this one does um, a basket border, and this one actually, um, it's not very easy to see in the framelit, but it does this overlay. So you can see that it has those cool little details to make uh, the basket look a little bit more intricate. So what I did for that is I actually uh, cut up little pieces of Stampin' Dimensionals. So I just took the Stampin' Dimensionals and um, cut some of the edge pieces really, really, really skinny and then just added those on the top and the bottom. And then I'm just going to place this, this is in crumb cake, I'm going to place it directly on top of a solid crumb cake. Uh, little basket base. So those dimensionals sort of give that basket a little bit of a dimension, of course, but it also, since it makes it pop, then it really makes the basket look um, look 3D or look like it actually has that texture to it rather than if it were to be laid flat. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to add adhesive like right down the middle and towards the bottom, but not towards the top. And the reason for that is because I want to be able to stick some of my apples down in there and I don't want it to be super tight. So then I just placed this onto one of the stitched shape squares because I super, super love these. I just love that extra little texture of that dotted edge because I feel like it does so much work for you um, with one crank through the big shot without actually having um, to do you know a second layer or more work or anything. So it does all the work for you. So now I took some of the, um, the eggs and I, or I stamped them in basic gray because I kind of like that light shade versus the basic black. I stamped a whole bunch of those as well as the leaves on a piece of very vanilla and then I die cut them out. So this is probably the hardest part is the, all the die cutting. So here you can see that I uh, stamped a whole bunch of them and I made a little boo-boo on one of them. You have to be careful not to stamp um, too hard there in the center or you'll end up with a little bit of the ink um, if you press too hard in the ink pad and then too hard onto the cardstock. But you can see out of all of those, I only had one little boo-boo. So one of the other tips that I have is adding a little piece of, um, of a post-it note or some little sticky to your framelit so that whenever you stick it on the super small image, it sort of has a little bit of stick to it. So I mean, 
mean, I've been using this lots and lots of times, and it still has just that little bit of stick, but it holds it in place so that when you crank it through the Big Shot, it's not gonna pop or move or anything on you, and that's definitely important whenever you're cutting out a million of these, because you don't want every other crank to have it pop and move, and then you have to re-stamp and re-crank it through. So, I use that um, on the little image there. You could also use, um, like I said, a post-it note, post-it note tape, or even press and seal. You know that um, that stuff that you put over like your uh, dishes that you take to a potluck, the little press and seal? You can also use that. So super fabulous uh, trick to use with regular things that you might have around your house. So here I have all of my little eggs and I just watercolored those with real red and then I did all of the little uh, leaves in Emerald Envy because I liked that bold um, green color. So I have one little egg here that I will show you how I did. I used my aqua painter and some of the real red. So here, let's move some of these things out of the way. Getting a little too crowded over here, aren't we? So I just took the aqua painter and I pressed my clear block into the real red ink pad to use as a little color palette. So I pick up the color with my aqua painter and just do a little swipe over the egg up and around and back down again and then sort of fill it in. And you'll see that now my fill in is a little bit lighter than, um, than the rest of it is. So I'm just gonna go back, pick up some more ink and brush over it again to sort of blend those colors together. And since all of my little apples or eggs are um, towards the top side of the, um, of the actual egg, or I guess bottom side it would technically be, then that's why I only colored that portion. The rest is actually going to be um, underneath the rest, so I didn't worry about coloring those, and that's where my finger was so I could hold on to each one of them. So that's how I colored all of those. Of course, we'll um, color a few more of the little leaves because we'll need to stamp those. Rather than coloring a million of those, um, I went ahead and stamped a few of them. For example, these up top here and then this little single down there were all stamped directly onto my project. So here I have some basic gray and the little leaf and I'm just going to stamp one down here and then stamp a few up top. You don't want to go up too high because you don't want your apples to go up too high, but just a few and then I'll sort of do like a double here. And then again, I'm going to use my Aqua Painter and my Emerald Envy ink, which is on this corner, and I'm just going to color those in. there you have all of your little leaves done and now it's time to add in all of your little eggs. So some of the eggs I actually did with a Stampin' Dimensional and I did have to trim them down so you know I just kind of take a little piece and cut like these little side pieces in half. That always works because you know you can use every single little bit of your Stampin' Dimensional piece. You definitely don't want to throw away that border because it's just as useful as the rest of them. So we'll add a few of these. Not all of them are going to be popped up, but a few of them will be. So I'll add some um, little dimensionals to those just to give that um, that look that the apples are 3D and that there's a whole bunch in there. So we're just going to tuck the little apple down underneath there and and so you can see how I can slide it underneath that basket because um, there isn't any adhesive towards the top of the basket. So I'm just going to add those in. I'm going to add a few behind these that are going to be flat. So I'm just going to use regular snail adhesive. And I actually I'm going to pop that one up just a little bit so I can sneak him back there. And then one more with a dimensional, I think. And actually, I think I still want one more over on the side. So there we have all of our little apples and then now I'm going to use a mini glue dot to adhere all of the little leaves since they are so small. So with that I'm just going to place the leaf onto the mini glue dot just like that and then pop it off with that mini glue dot on the back side. So I'm going to tuck in some of these leaves into all those little spots making sure that I'm covering up any of those apple pieces that are showing perhaps.
And so there you have your little bushel basket of apples. And I still have some leftover pieces, but that's great. I can use those on another card, um, as I will probably be making lots of these because they're super, super cute. So I went ahead and I layered this onto a piece of chocolate chip just to add a little bit more color and texture to the card here. And so I'm just going to add that right there. And then I will add this to a crumb cake card base. So here is our crumb cake card base, and I'm just going to add it right there in the middle. And I have the Thanks a Bunch, which is also from that same stamp set, and I'm just going to ink that up in chocolate chip and stamp it down here on the corner. And then to finish it off, I have some of the linen thread, which has that perfect little rustic look for our bushel basket of apples. And I'm just going to wrap this around three times there along the spine of the card. Sort of fan it out just a little bit to give a little more foo-foo to our card. And I'm going to tie it into a double knot so that I know it's nice and strong and tight. And then I will actually tie a little bow into it with the leftover pieces. So there is our final card looking super fabulous with our little bushel basket of apples there. Super, super cute. Again, this is with the basket builder framelits and the basket bunch stamp set that looks like an Easter stamp set, but you can even do these fabulous cards uh, like this one here. And of course, I'll be showing other amazing ideas that you can do with this stamp set on my blog, laurastamppad.com, so check that out, as this doesn't have to be just an Easter stamp set. You can use it for so much more. So try to think outside the box with some of your stamp sets on what other images or ideas you can create. Let me know in the comments below what you like to create with this stamp set. Do you like the peeps? Do you like the Easter set? Do you like to use it for something else? I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe if you're new as I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And check out some of my other fabulous uh, samples and tutorials that I've done. Until next time, happy stamping. Bye-bye.